Hello and welcome back to our Spark AR tutorial video looking at a native UI picker. This is part two and please make sure you go back and watch part one where we basically created this JavaScript. We imported some textures and we made this effect where whenever we press one of these little five buttons down here, it changes the material that is being defined within our project. So if we just quickly have a look at our script down here at the bottom, uh, you remember that in that video we explained that we set up this thing here called patches.inputs.scalia and we also told the uh, project to load in the patches module. So what this means is we can actually take the value that is detected by this in, uh, selected index, which is here, and says whenever we press one of these buttons, that, and this result is generated, that we want this value to be able to be taken out and then put into our patch editor in some manner. Uh, in the last video, we know that we didn't get around to actually uh, implementing this, so we'll do that first. So to do that, we need to, first off, we need to go to our JavaScript, so our scripts.js file, and you'll be greeted with these two options, from script and to script. So we're going to click on the form script and just click on the little plus button like so. We're going to make sure we're using a number because we're taking a value. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, if you remember the last video. I'm going to select the number value. And we just need to make sure that this uh, value that is being picked up is the selected index. So selected in lowercase, index with capital I, like so. And I tend to, uh, we need to uh, make sure that we confirm it by pressing enter, just to make sure that our selection is now saved. So now if I go to my patch editor and I drag my JavaScript into my patch editor, I should have this thing here called variables from script. If I drag from that and add our value patch and I change the uh, button selection down here, you should notice that this value now gives us a numeric value that is assigned to that button. So one uh, or zero being the default, which is what is the initial value when the project starts. So now we can actually do that. We can actually take the values from these buttons. There's a lot we can do. For example, we could take uh, this value or oh, actually we can take it directly from the script itself, uh, take an equals exactly, and say if this script value here equals zero, i.e. this button is active, we could say that we only want this emitter to be active when it is zero or button one is pressed. So at the moment we can see our emitter playing in the background. If I press two, three, four or five it disappears, but as soon as I go back to one, it reappears. This can also be used, so anything that we link up from this equals exactly would start to trigger. So we could, e we could link up an audio file. So we could have uh, an audio file playing only when we press this trigger. Uh, we could have multiple different emitters. So let me just uh, quickly duplicate that emitter and just uh, give this second emitter another value. And we could say if this was equal to one or button two then we want the second emitter to show so you can start to see quickly how you can start to build up uh, a variety of effects and again we can combine this with many of the other tutorials on this channel um, to trigger from this point here uh, at the moment we're working with very static textures so we're working with textures that don't have any animation in um, but the good the sort of beauty of this is our materials, our textures can be animated, for example. So if I just go to add asset, import from computer, and I just uh, select a series of images like so, so one to nine, I just import them in. And with all those selected, I select it to be a texture sequence. I can then select one of my materials, let's say material 3, 
assign that as a new animation sequence. Select that animation sequence, choose my frame, so one to nine. And now when I go and press three, we will have this animation playing on a loop like so. We could also control this animation. So we could say, only have this animation play when the screen is tapped or after a certain amount of time. So again, we can combine effects to generate our overall look and feel quite easily. So let's just uh, reset that. There we go. So you can create, uh, for example, a variety of animated facial masks that kind of tell a story or build a brand quite easily alongside audio that plays when that uh, corresponding icon is selected. If ever we wanted to change these icons, we just simply replace the texture file down here, and then these images would update, and making sure that compression is turned off and we keep the image sizes fairly small. So we're working to 180 by 180 for these little buttons, for example. Uh, we can also start to trigger other things. So let's say I add a plane to my scene. I uh, give this a new material and I make sure that this material, for example, is doesn't it has dev test off, so it doesn't uh, clip into our scene. We move this plane up a little bit, is that the way? And we can say that every time, whenever this uh, equals a certain value, so let's say this equals one, we want this to play a looped animation with a transition so I want this to rotate on the z-axis 180 degrees so whenever this equals 1 this will be looping and rotating 180 degrees if I press mirror it will go forwards and then backwards but as soon as I choose another value it will just stop at that stage to uh, reset it, I can just link it like so. So whenever any other value is pressed, for example 1, we need to link this up to our reset value or our pulse up here, and then that would reset our animation. Uh, another way, if we wanted the animation to be played once, would be just to use the standard animation patch. and make sure that the pulse that is created is turned on to play and when it is not playing it's set to reverse. So now when we go to 2 it will play once, spin 180 and then stop, but as soon as we go back to any other value it will reverse the animation and return to its original position. This gives a bit of a more smoother, cleaner look to the movement rather than it being moving and then suddenly jolting back to its previous position for example. So this is just a kind of little addition and um, kind of key points. This is why we added in this uh, patches input down here. And just to show that there is so much more you can do with this setup. Uh, another thing you could also quickly do is at the moment the interiors are set to be flat. If I wanted to change to be, to be, for example, face paint, I always just need to make sure that that material, when I do make any changes to it, that I make sure that death test is still turned off and I can still adjust the values as I see fit and there you go again it's just that giving you the building blocks to combine together to generate something completely new the entire project will be available down in the description down below alongside links to the previous video we'll be looking at another more native UI examples uh, including Slido examples in upcoming videos over the next few weeks Remember to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.